Hello everyone, my name's Nick Eastham. I'm the Solutions Technical Manager here at Brightwave. Uh, today I thought I'd talk to you about an issue that might arise when you're converting your old Flash e-learning courses to HTML5. Now, many of you will have courses that were created back before iPads and Android tablets were prevalent, and as such, they were most likely built in Flash, either that or uh, possibly uh, authoring tools that output to Flash. Um, if you did use one of these tools, and I'm talking about such things as uh, Adobe Captivate or Articulate Storyline, um, then you're possibly in luck that uh, you won't need to uh, build your course again from scratch in HTML5. Um, both of these tools have options now where you can uh, select HTML5 or mobile when you're publishing your course. Um, now, so when you, when you view the HTML5 content in, that you get from that, um, viewed on your desktop PC, uh, it should look pretty much uh, like the Flash version that you had before. Uh, what you might not realize is that when you view it on a tablet, the initial launch screen uh, will look quite different. Um, both Captivate and Storyline, um, they overlay a kind of a giant play button onto it. I'll show you the kind of thing I'm talking about. Uh, this is it here. So uh, it's a pretty ugly looking thing, I think you'll agree, and we here at Brightway um, certainly like to get rid of it. I'm going to show you now how you can remove this from your Storyline output. Uh, the solution actually was initially posted by a member of the Storyline forums, which is a, a great resource if you don't already know about it. To remove it, you need to change some code um, from the output of your of your publish. Um, so that does, of course, mean that you need to change uh, this code each time you publish your course, because of course, every time you publish it, it's going to overwrite any changes that you made before. Um, so let's have a look at uh, a typical Storyline course. Um, here's your folder here. This is the output from Storyline. If we look inside this, we need to look inside this mobile folder. And here in the root of this is a JavaScript file called player underscore compiled dot JS. Uh, and we need to edit this. I'm simply uh, going to aim to edit it in uh, Notepad++, but um, Notepad or any other text editor will suffice. So now this might look pretty daunting. There's uh, several pages here of, of compressed uh, JavaScript, um, but we can go straight to the part that we need to amend by searching for a certain function name. And if, so if we do that by uh, pressing Control and F to get up our search um, options, and I typed it in already. This is the function name that you need to look for: player dot populate iOS launch. Uh, open bracket, close bracket, semicolon. Now, if we search for this in here, here we are. I hope you can see that. We need to edit directly after this. So, if you put your cursor in there directly after that, we're not going to change that. We're just going to put something in um, after it. So, if we need to type in player dot reveal post interstitial open bracket close bracket semicolon um, once we've done that uh, check that looks okay yeah I think so um, simply save it so control s and um, the next time that you uh, upload that course and uh, view it on your tablet, that should look quite different. I mean, that this play button simply won't be there, and well, with our course, um, it would look something like this. Um, I should actually mention the reason that this play button is here in the first place is because iPads and iPhones won't allow video or audio to play on uh, a web page automatically without the user initiating it with uh, an interaction of some kind. Um, so just in case the first page of your course has got media on it and it's configured to play automatically, that's why they've added this button here to kind of kickstart it. Um, so if you have uh, if you have audio, video on page one of your course and uh, you'd still rather you know remove that button, um, of course the other option is that you add your own button to page one of your course. Um, it does of course mean that it won't only be there when you're viewing it. Uh, from a mobile device, it would be there 
you know, every time you viewed it, whether you were from the, on a desktop or where you were. Uh, but of course, it does mean that you can you have control over the style of that button. Um, so at least you can um, art direct it to kind of fit in with your course. Um, if you're not lucky enough to have built your previous e-learning in one of these tools, and you do need to convert them to HTML5 by re rebuilding them from scratch, uh, Brightwave can help you with that. So um, we can either use the tools that I've mentioned already, um, or we have our own in-house tool, um, which we call Waveform, which can produce anything from traditional desktop courses uh, to responsive modules, or um, it can do both. While working in this space, we've developed a lot of tips and tricks for the challenges of Flash to HTML5 conversion. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send me an email. Um, this is my email address here. Um, or use the comments below. Um, thanks for watching.